What's up everybody? Today we're going to be going over how to initialize our attribute set using gameplay effects. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to extend the gameplay effect class. Simply search for gameplay effect, give it a name you like, and go ahead and create it. Now that we've extended the gameplay effect class, we need to add a property that's going to come in handy later. This is going to be a simple U property. Go ahead and make it a blueprint read only, edit anywhere, and give it a category you like. This property is going to be of a type F name, and we're going to call it effect ID. This is how we're going to track the effect. Now that that's done, we're going to create another U property. This is going to be edit defaults only, blueprint read write, blueprint read only, and I'm going to set the category to effects. We're going to create an array of T subclass gameplay effects. Now, we're going to want to use the new class that we created that extends the gameplay effects. I'm going to call my property default effects. And since we are now referencing that type, we're going to go ahead and forward declare it at the top. Now the next thing we're going to need is another U property. This is going to be edit defaults only and a category of abilities. And this is going to be of type ability system component. This is the engine on which the ability system plugin works. Remember to include the header for the ability system component. Now that we got our properties created, we're going to need a few functions to actually implement these gameplay effects. So to get started, let's create a U function. This is going to be blueprint callable, and we'll give it a category of effects. This function will be of type void, and I'm going to call it init effects. So this is the thing that will initialize all of our default effects. Now, but before we do anything else, let's remember to include the header file for the gameplay effect class that we just created. With that done, let's implement our init effects function. This function will be fairly straightforward. We are going to do a for loop over all of our default effects. And for each effect in the array, we're going to apply that to our character. Let's switch back over to our header file and create a function that does that. This is another U function that will be blueprint callable and category effects. We'll call this function add effect. It'll take one parameter of type T subclass of U tutorial gameplay effect or whatever you decided to call your gameplay effect class. Now, because we want to make our game multiplayer compatible, we're going to add an additional function. This will be the server call to add effects. To do that, we create a U function and make it reliable server with validation. And we'll give this a name server add effect. It'll take the same parameter as our add effect function above, T subclass of U tutorial gameplay effect. With that done, let's hop back over. We'll start with adding the add effect function. We'll also go ahead and stub out the server add effect function at this time. Now, because we included the with validation property on our function, we got to implement a function that returns a Boolean and it will be called server add effect underscore validate. It'll take the same parameter as the server function declared in the header file. And now we'll implement the server implementation. We can do that by defining the implementation as server add effect underscore implementation with our declared parameter. For now, we'll just have the validation return true since we always want it to run. And you gotta make sure to spell implementation correct. With those functions stubbed out, let's start working on the add effect function. The first thing we wanna to do is check if whoever called this function is the server. So we can do that by calling has authority 
by putting an exclamation mark in front of that, we're asking if this caller is not the server. And if they are not the server, we want to notify the server of what we're doing. Next, we're going to check if our ability system component is valid. As I said earlier, this is the engine of the gameplay ability plugin. So we gotta make sure that it's ready to go. So what we're gonna wanna do here is first, we wanna save off a reference to our effect. So we'll do that by creating a type T subclass of U tutorial gameplay effect and put the pointer reference there and call this L effect ref. Next, we're gonna wanna create an effect context. This is to sort of give the effect some information. And here we can see the ability system component uh, and work. It can create the effect context for us. And in that context, we want to tell the effect who the source object is. And that's gonna be our character. Next, we're gonna create an effect spec handle. You can think of this as sort of the blueprint that we want the gameplay ability plugin to use. And we can create that by using the ability system component. We're gonna tell it the effect that we want it to implement, the level or the strength of the effect, and whatever context we've set on it. Now that that's created, we'll make sure that it's valid. And if it is, we're going to use the ability system component again and apply that effect to ourself. When you apply effect, you'll be given a handle. You'll want to save this off so that we can interact with this effect in the future. So let's implement a system so that we can keep track of these. Within my tutorial gameplay effect header file, I'm gonna create a struct. You could create this struct in its own separate file, but for convenience, I'm gonna just create it here. So I'll create a U struct and I'm gonna call this effect handle key pair. And this struct will simply be the effect ID and the effect handle. This will allow us to query effects by the ID and be able to access the handle at any time. Lastly, I'm gonna create a constructor that takes in the ID and the handle. This is the primary constructor that we will be using, but I like to always create a default constructor. We'll switch over to the tutorial gameplay effect CPP file and we'll implement those constructors. These constructors will be very simple. We'll simply take in the parameters and set the value. Now back over into our tutorial character file, we can get the ID of the effect by using that effect ref that we created earlier. Using the effect ref, we can get the default object. And from the default object, we can pull out the effect ID. So now that we have our ID and our handle, we need something to store these in. Let's switch back over to our header file and create an array of effect key pairs, and I'll call this effects. Because we created that struct within our tutorial gameplay effect file, we'll have to import the header file. This array of effect key pairs, we'll want to replicate this so the server and the clients can all be aware of the effects on any given character. Now, before we put this effects array into use, let's go ahead and create our get lifetime replicated props function. This is how you replicate the effects array. By using the do rep lifetime, this will replicate the effects array to the server as well as all the clients. You'll remember from our last tutorial, we'll have to include the Unreal Network header file. With that taken care of, let's finish off the effects function by adding our newly created effects key pair to our array. Now we need to make sure that we haven't forgot about our server function. It will be very simple. We're simply gonna call the add effects function from the server. And we'll finally go back to our init effects function and call the add effects passing in the effect T subclass. Now we're not quite done yet. We need something to kick off this whole process and begin play will be a great function for us to do that in. So let's go ahead and override that function. Now, anytime you're overriding a function, it's very important to remember to call the super. This is to make sure that we don't inadvertently break something. Now, as I said before, none of this will work unless our ability system component is valid. So we are going to check that. And if it is valid, we're going to initialize our ability system component with our actor information. Lastly, we'll call init effects. If we did everything right, our game should compile and the editor will launch. In our next tutorial, we'll get to the fun stuff of actually implementing gameplay effects using blueprints. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. Thank <laughs> you.